Hi all, uh, this is Abdesh here, and um, I'm author of a book called Friendly Agent, where I interview top insurance agents and uh, decode it, what's the secret behind their success. And this book has helped hundreds of agents in scaling up their insurance agency. So today's video is part of our uh, Medicare Bootcamp series. And in this series, uh, we are trying to help agents in having uh, a six figure, um, you know, Medicare open enrollment season. So in this video, we are going to discuss uh, first about the, you know, business opportunities which Medicare uh, brings for insurance agents. Secondly, we'll discuss some of the basics of Medicare. It will help new agents or people who are trying to move, you know, their line of business to Medicare in learning how to, you know, um, go about it. Uh, we are also going to discuss, you know, how you get appointed, how to select the right FMO. And most importantly, we are going to discuss how do you get paid as an insurance agent? What are the different, you know, commission structures and uh, payment options? We are also going to discuss how you can start from zero and go, uh, you know, six figure and beyond. And, you know, one of the case study, uh, how other agents um, have been able to achieve this. So make sure you stay till the end um, so that you know you don't miss any part of it. And uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the subsequent uh, Medicare bootcamp sessions. Today's agenda, we're gonna hit on four, four main parts of it. The basics of Medicare, what it is, how it works. Um, who, who's the market? Who's the Medicare market? And in determining if we want to, if who the right FMO is, for those not familiar with that term, if you're an independent broker, you choose what FMO you're going to work with, who's going to give you the contracts, who's going to give you the support. That's what an FMO, it's called field marketing organization. Uh, very few companies in the Medicare space allow you to go direct. Some of them do, but if you go direct, you are uh, limited. And then we're gonna talk about how do you get paid? How do you get paid in, the, in Medicare? So again, like uh, my name is Larry Bush. I've been in the insurance industry since 2010. Um, I started in uh, infant and banking actually with uh, Guardian. Um, I was all excited. I was going to make all kind of money selling high to high end net worth clients, and um, and I realized that um, it was a very long cycle to actually get in front of them to get a sale to make commission, um, and I was actually losing money every month. I was doing that. Um, I got into final expense after that. Um, Final expense is very lucrative, um, but the problem I had is I had to keep spending money for leads, and um, but the money I spent, I'd get back 30 days later, maybe a little bit more than I get a charge back, and I was kind of running into this uh, uh, back and forth, and, and then on, I figured the final expense out was making pretty good money, and then one day I woke up on January 1st, and I said, uh, I got to do this all over again. The renewals were just not as good. So I, I had to figure something out. In the meantime, I was referring clients to a friend of mine who was in doing Medicare. And uh, he finally, after about a year or so, he goes, man, you're an idiot. He goes, you got to start doing Medicare. He goes, you're giving me referrals. You're talking to the seniors. You got to start doing this. And uh, to be 100% transparent, I was scared of the certifications. I heard all these certifications, how difficult they were. And I was scared. I'm like, I don't want to do certification. I just want to sell. And, and that kind of held me up for about a year or two. And then uh, I also did a little bit in annuities. Um, but what I found is that all those products, none of them are bad. And it's not that you can't make a living doing it. But I was looking for something that was going to give me a base. And uh, and that's where I found in, in Medicare. And we'll go into that a little more. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of my background. I was in ministry prior to that um, and then got into the insurance business and really had to figure it out on my own. 
I mean, I was jumping from this place, this place would recruit me and another place and I wasn't making any money and I had to figure it out on my own. So let's start with uh, Medicare basics. Um, there's part A, there's part B, part C and part D. When someone turns 65, if they uh, are still working at a group plan, um, they're gonna get put in part A no matter what. The, birth, the year of their birthday, they'll be put in part A. Um, now, if they choose to sign up for part B, um, then they can apply through social security. Once they have A and B, then they get to choose if they wanna go with traditional um, Medicare, original Medicare, also known as traditional Medicare, or if they want to go Medicare Advantage. So part A is a hospital coverage. So somebody goes into the hospital, they, they hand their card in, and that's what part A covers in the hospital. Part B is the medical coverage. So that's going to in, be in things like going to see a primary care doctor, going to see a specialist, doing an outpatient surgery, things like that. And then Medicare, so under traditional Medicare, a person's gonna choose Medicare supplement to supplement what Medicare doesn't cover. Right? That's the whole Medicare supplement supplements Medicare. And then uh, part D is prescription coverage. So you got part A, you got part B, and you got part D. And if you um, choose to stay in Medicare, traditional Medicare, you're going to want to pick a supplement. Your client is going to want to pick up a supplement so that they're not paying 20% of who know, whatever the bill is, basically. So this is what this would look like. If, you, if a client a member chooses original Medicare, they're going to have their red, white, and blue card. You would have probably gone over things with them, and then they would have said, hey, I want a Medicare supplement. And then they would get this, uh, they would get a card from the insurance company. The insurance company supplement is the one, that's who they pay to supplement what Medicare doesn't pay. And then you would have a drug card. So this last one, it's a Cigna, and these are just examples of companies, but that is a Part D drug card. So basically someone in original Medicare is gonna have the red, white, and blue card, a Medigap card or Med Medicare supplement card, and a prescription drug cost uh, and drug card. So option two would be Medicare Advantage. So what Medicare Advantage does is you got to have the red, white, and blue card, no matter what. Um, and now you can say, hey, I'm going to stay in Medicare, traditional Medicare, or I'm going to go into a Medicare Advantage. So the combination of Part A and Part B um, is all already built into Medicare Advantage. And in many cases, and I would, I would say the majority of cases now, Part D is included. So you would see Medicare Advantage, MAPD, Medicare Advantage Prescription Drug Coverage, all in one plan. And then that's offered by private insurance companies like Humana, Anthem, Aetna, United, um, just to name a few. Often, these include additional benefits like vision, dental, gem memberships, food cards, and, and, and more, a lot, a lot of other unique uh, benefits that some of them have now. Um, so to step back a second, if someone go, has traditional Medicare, let's say, and they go to the doctor, they present the red, white, and blue card, the doctor's office builds the red, white, and blue card. For just simplicity reasons today, we're just gonna use that Medicare pays 80% and then the client has to pay 20. So if someone picks up a supplement, they're gonna, they're gonna have that second card. So then the doctor, the office will bill Medicare, Medicare pays 80, then they send a um, send the, the second, the 20% bill to the Medicare supplement. And it, that is paid. Now, there are some deductibles, and I'm not going to get into the weeds of everything today because that's not the purpose of this meeting, but there's like a deductible for Part B before the plan kicks in and, 
And, uh, but just, so, so just know that Medicare and traditional Medicare is actually paying 80% of the cost. Now, when we switch to Medicare Advantage, what is happening is Medicare is going to pay the insurance companies. So they're going to pay Umana or Anthem or Aetna or UHC or Devoted Health or whoever it is. They're going to pay them monthly for each client. And there's all kind of metrics of how they get paid and star ratings and all that kind of stuff. But just for this purposes, you need to know is Medicare is going to pay the uh, Advantage plan. The Advantage plan, by law, has to pay out, I believe that number is 87% of what they get from Medicare needs to be paid out to the um, to, in, in benefits. So it, a company will get fined if they make too much profit on the money they got from Medicare. That's how they give the additional benefits because they have to be show they have to show they're giving out benefits. So they have to say, hey, we collected you know hundred thousand dollars. Just making this up of an example, but hundred thousand we got to pay eighty seven thousand out in some way, shape, or form in the form of benefits, health care, to to uh, justify it and not get fined by uh, CMS, which stands for Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Um, so that that is, uh, and, and so with traditional, med, with Medicare Advantage, it's just one card. So they're not gonna use their red, white, and blue card when they go to the doctor. They're just gonna show their their card. I just pulled this one off as an example, United Healthcare. So, this card would be shown to the doctor. It might have like, uh, it's probably got like the primary care doctor. It's probably got a zero copay. Um, the uh, primary care might have a copay of $35, depending on the plan. They're all a little different, but for the most part, that they that's how it works. So they have a maximum out of pocket built in for the client. So they're not, the client's not paying a premium, but they do have some cost sharing on the medical side. So for, you know, they may have a $3,500 max out of pocket. It's not a deductible. It's totally different than a deductible. So what will happen is each time they make a copay, it is subtracted from the maximum out of pocket of that plan. If they reach the maximum out of pocket and they pay out you know, in our example, I just threw out 3,500, then the plan pays 100% after that. Now, the chances of them hitting that maximum out of pocket is actually pretty low. It's uh, three to 8%, depending on which carrier, you talk, which of the insurance companies you talk to. So it's not very likely. Um, but again, the, just wanted people to understand the difference of how how it is administrated, either traditional Medicare or Medicare Advantage. So, whoops. So the Medicare market, you, we've probably heard it. Everyone's heard this. It, it's, it's been happening for years. 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 every year. That's, that's the market. That's people who are... Um, who are turning 65 who are going into Medicare or potentially can go into. Now, I'll give one quick disclaimer too, um, is there are people under 65 who have Medicare. So if someone goes is working and they go on disability and they have enough work credits, 24 months from the date of their disability, they will actually uh, automatically get enrolled into Medicare. So that's a that's a whole there's a whole another group of people that have Medicare. And for our purposes, we don't always need to know why or how they got Medicare. But if they have that red, white, and blue card, then we can help them better understand. So what I love about Medicare over any other product is that. It true, we truly are helping people understand the Medicare maze. People are getting taken advantage of. You see the TV commercials. 
those are marketing companies that the insurance companies are a lot of times paying to run those and they, they have their service by those call centers. Those people are on salary making 19 bucks an hour and maybe $25 bonus if they enroll someone. And they don't know what they don't know the local market like we do in each of our markets. They they don't understand the true needs of the client. And so we have a great advantage, especially if you work in, in the community, which, you know, is more of my uh, my model. Uh, so we've truly become a resource. When I first started with Medicare, I really looked at myself as a sales rep because I came from the life side, the final expense, and it was all about sales. And then when my business really started taking off is when I became a resource. And people were looking at me to be a resource, and I was solving problems. I wasn't always making sales by solving problems, but I was becoming known in the community. So doctor's offices would refer people to me. Um, dentists would refer people to me. Um, social workers, uh, food banks, things like that. So there were all kind of people in the community that were referring me to me and I was becoming a resource. And when I when that happened, my sales shot up. And it, so it's ironic that I went from looking at myself as a sales agent to now I'm just a resource helping people. Um, so we truly improve the lives of others. I mean, I, there's lifetime commissions. So as long as they stay our client, as long as um, they don't switch plans, they will be our, we get paid on them. And we'll go into how we get paid and all that at the end. But just know it, it is one of the true lifetime commission renewals that a lot of insurance does not have. Uh, you got a loyal customer base that gives referrals. I mean, they when they have a friend who's turning 65 and they really like you, um, then you're, you're getting a referral. I mean, I just got a call before this meeting. This lady, hey, I talked to you about a year ago, but I was staying on my husband's group plan. Now my husband's retiring and I, I need to be put on a plan. And I'm like, I, to be honest, I hardly, re I, I remember a little bit as we started talking more, but that was just because I was just helping her and giving her information when she called me the first time, again, being a resource. Uh, so loyal base, it gives referrals. And then the market is continually growing. Um, one thing I didn't like about the work in life insurance and, um, and especially the uh, infinite banking, which is I'm a, a, I really believe in it and I loved it, but I didn't know who my market was. It was hard to know. Hey, does this person have enough income to do this? Is this the right fit? I, you know, this is the market. We know the market. It, they're turning 65. They have Medicare. And they need our help. So, so now that we established the market, it's like, okay, so how do I understand this IMO maze, if you will? I, I'm confused. Who, who, who do I trust? Who's got my best interests in mind? Um, I keep getting emails from certain companies. I don't know how any of this works. Um, I put together just a couple a couple questions that you should ask anybody you talk to. Um, you know, the first is, am I vested day one? If I come to work with your organization and I write, you know, in the course of three or four years, I write a hundred clients, do I get to keep that? You know, if, if I if I'm only there for a certain period of time. Or am I vested day one? Do I continually get that? Do I own my book day one? Because if you got a hundred clients and for some reason you got to, you're like, hey, I got this other better opportunity, or um, I don't really want to do this anymore, or move, whatever it is. I'm just, it, you want to be able to at least sell that book. Someone will buy that book for you for two and a half times what it's worth. Um, so you want to ask that that FMO, hey, look, if so, if this doesn't work out and I leave in six months, but I wrote 100 people, um, do I still keep that renewal? 
or do you get it? Am I vested day one? Um, find out, hey, am I getting paid by the insurance company or are you getting paid my commissions and then you pay me? So, so there are some organizations out there that, you know, they got great training and they, 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 they're all over the place. They're always recruiting, but they own your book. They get paid and then they pay you. But if you don't stay there two years, they keep all your renewal. Now, that's not a good deal for you because if you leave, now you're starting from scratch again. Now you're starting from zero, whereas if you maintain those 100 clients, even if you left, you still get paid for them, then you're, in a, you're going to be in a much better position to continue to grow your business versus going from having an income to zero again just because you didn't understand how the – because they don't tell you this right away. So um, do you get any support? You know, do they, sometimes they say, they'll give you a bunch of leads. Well, what does that mean? How old are these leads? Have these leads been worked by other agents before? Are they fresh? Um, do you give me any training? If I come up with my own marketing organization, are you? Gonna, am I going to get any co-op dollars for this? Um, do you have any community partnerships? You know, do you guys work on, a, you know, in a community with um, a doctor's office that, that refers you businesses that you can introduce me to? Um, what, what do I get? Because a lot of these recruiters, their job is to recruit you, put you in the system, and if you write business, they get paid, but they don't train you. They, don't, they won't go in the field with you. They won't go in appointments with you. So you want to know these, and everyone's different. I'm not saying any of these are bad. I mean, for some people, they don't need anything, so it's fine. Um, and then the second part, are you getting paid the full commission, or is the FMO taking a piece of your commission? Uh, you know, they they may not they probably they're not going to tell you that unless you ask the question. And even if you even if you ask, they who who knows? So know what the full commission should be before you sign on the line, you know, do a little bit of research, talk to some other places. Um, and this one's, a, this last one's a big one to me. Um, and I even know some other FMOs that, that I've worked with in the past and, and there's different opinions on this, but will they release you to another FMO? Like if you work in the final expense field and you have a con and you have a contract, okay? And you say it's with Mutual Omaha, and you're like, "Hey, I want to go to another IMO. They want me to have Mutual Omaha. They got they got better leads or whatever. It doesn't matter. You for whatever reason you want to switch. If you don't write, if you didn't write business for six months, you can transfer with no problem." Medicare is not like that. Medicare is totally different. So if you go with an FMO and they won't release you, you might have to wait six months before you can go to your new company. Now, the good news is you can keep writing business and it's no big deal. Um, it's not going to affect you, but it will affect if you go if you're moving to a different place. They may not want to invest in, in you and help you get going right away until you're released because they're not getting paid any of the override. Um, and will they put it in writing? I mean, will they, you know, because it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, we'll release you. And then you ask for a release and like, ah, I'm sorry, we don't, we're not going to release you. Um, and knowing who is the person who actually has to do the release is, is important. All right, so let's go into understanding how you get paid. Um, so we're going to start with traditional Medicare like we did in the beginning. And just to remind everyone, traditional Medicare is you use your red, white, and blue card. You have a Medicare supplement, and then you have a prescription drug plan. So that's the plan that has three cards when you go to the doctor or the, or, and or the pharmacy. So let's say you sit down with a client, you did a you do a presentation, you explain to them 
how both of them work. And then at the end, they decide they want a Medicare uh, supplement. So you explain to them, okay, no problem. I'm going to shop rates for you. Number of different companies offer Medicare supplements. Um, you, you, the commission ranges usually between 18 and 20 percent. Sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little higher, but that's a good average, around 18 to 20 percent. So you write someone their monthly premiums 125 a month. So you take the 125 times 12. That's $1,800 of annual commission. You multiply that by 20%, and that's $300 commission for that client every year. Now, some companies will give you that money up front, and just you know, and just pay pay you up front for for the year. Other companies will just pay you um, pay you monthly. So you may just get 25 bucks a month. All that just depends on the company. Um, most Medicare supplements pay for six years, so you'll still you'll get that three hundred dollars or twenty five dollars a month for for six years for each, uh, and, and that's in most states. But for each client that you put in a Medicare supplement, then you write a prescription drug plan because remember they need a prescription drug plan also if they're going to stay in traditional Medicare to cover their costs because that red, white, and blue card doesn't cover prescriptions. It only covers hospital and medical. So now you write them on a prescription drug plan. They're turning 65. Because they're turning 65 and never been on a plan, um, you're going to get paid $92 uh, up front for the year for uh, writing that client. And I would even be like, if, uh, you know, you're writing someone today and they start their birthdays in August and they start. Um, you'll get the $92 and then starting in January, you'll get $46 renewal each year for the drug, for the drug plan. So someone new to Medicare and a supplement, you'll get $392 in commissions for year one. And that's the Medicare supplement plus the $92 for that. And then in years, uh, two through six, you get $346 a year for each client. And then the prescription plan is uh, lifetime renewals. Now, if you write them again, like say their rates go up in the Medicare supplement and you put them into a new one, you'll start, you'll get paid again for another six years. But sometimes that's to be 100% transparent. Sometimes that's difficult because if they develop certain medical conditions, they may not qualify for a Medicare supplement um, after the first year. All right. So now we're going to go to um, Medicare Advantage. So same scenario. The person is turning 65. You sit down. You explain to them how it's going on, uh, what, what their options are, and they choose uh, Medicare Advantage. You would be paid six hundred and one dollars up front in the first year, and then you will get twenty five dollars monthly renewal starting in January. So and that again is lifetime renewal, so that twenty five dollars is going to continue um, for as long as they're your client. So as long as they don't call a TV commercial or or talk, answer direct mail or talk to someone else, and change plans, as long as they stick with the plan you put them in, then you're going to get the $25 um, renewals uh, lifetime. That's new to Medicare. Let's say you meet them. They're already in a Medicare Advantage plan, and they're not happy with it. And so you realize, hey, it is a special election period I can use, and you write them you get 301 for the renewal on that. But if you help the member in August, um, it's going to be prorated because they already paid another agent all the way up to July. So if you write them for an August 1st and they start the plan, they will pay you the rest of the year up front 
and then January, they give you $25 a month, uh, monthly. So here's a, you know, comparison just, in, and I'm just took the first six years. So if you put someone into a Medicare, using our example, the, the rates change, um, they may be higher, they may be lower. It just depends on uh, when you put them in and what area. But in our example of $125 a month Medicare supplement, uh, in the first six years on one person, you would have made $2,122. On that same Medicare Advantage, you would have made 2106 Now, the big difference between the Advantage and traditional Medicare is that you're still going to get 301, and that that actually that number will probably change because each year Medicare ups with the the most that we can get paid, and so when it's up, when they up it, the person that the person stays in the same plan, you actually get the increase. But for this example, um, we'll just stay say it stayed the same 301 for uh, six years. Uh, five years and 601 for year one, it's 2106. So you can see in the first six years, it's pretty close to making the same commission. Um, most people turning 65 these days are choosing Medicare Advantage. I'll just be honest with you. Um, prior, prior ages, um, you got to remember, um, traditional Medicare started in 1966. So supplements have been around since 66 until 2005 without any Medicare Advantage didn't come around until 2006. So just given the head start that original Medicare had and Medicare supplements had, you would think that, you know, there's way more people in Medicare supplements. Um, this year, it's 50-50. If you took all the people who are in Medicare, 50% have supplements, 50% have advantage. But people turning 65, my experience, and this is not a number that I've seen anywhere, 50% I've seen it through uh, Medicaid, Medicare's data. But my experience is that 75% of new people when I present both options or choose a Medicare Advantage. Because remember, Medicare Advantage doesn't have that $125 premium. They're going into a plan without a premium that's going to give extra benefits and, and things like that. So summary, why Medicare? You get paid to help seniors understand their options. You are their resource. Uh, 335 Medicare Advantage clients equals $100,500 residual lifetime income. So I have um, I have two agents that um, have hit the 100,000 in in uh, three in the first three years. One of them was a final expense agent. And he was just tired of paying for leads and p knocking on doors and just grinding and having to start over every year. So I recruited him. He continued to do his final expense. And then he was able to um, learn the Medicare business slowly. He would talk to, when he was talking to his clients, he would ask him a little bit about Medicare or they would ask him most of the time if he did that. And then uh, he would just call me and say, hey, what can I do to help this person? And that's how he learned it. And he had, and he, it took him about three and a half years to hit six figures. And um, his, his, uh, his mom passed away about a year or so ago. I went to the funeral and uh, his wife came over to me and who I never met and just said, Hey, I want to thank you so much. My, my husband has so less stress financially and paying bills than he has in the last 10 years because he came from the mortgage business then that went down and then he goes into this final expense and insurance and he's having trouble getting leads and 
getting chargebacks and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and honestly, I had no idea the impact that just helping them um, had made. And then I had another agent who started a year and a half ago, and she had no experience at all. She actually, I had to help her get, point in the right direction how to get her license for health and life. Um, she, she went through that. Um, she got let go during COVID. And so she was going from making 60, 70 grand to zero and had to figure and had to figure it out. And she now year and a half in, she's got 240 clients. So she, she's by this time next year, she's going to have six figure income. Um, and again, she, she just, she just put herself out there. I asked questions. I met, we met on a regular basis for training. Um, a lot of times and most of the time in person and she, you know, she's on her way to six figures, um, which, you know, it, it was, it was a, it was a grind. It was hard. The first year was really hard because she had a lot. She went from a pretty good income to zero and had to, had to build it, but that's where she is. So in summary, I'd just say, look, the best thing I did in my career was making Medicare Advantage and treating it as I'm going to, I'm going to build my base salary and any other product that I do is this extra commission. So you, you build the base. And then if you write a final expense, if you write an annuity, if you do home and auto insurance, um, all of that is extra. Um, whereas you got this base, you stay in touch with them. You let them know you're out there to help them. Uh, and they, they will refer people to you because it's a confusing business. And, and we make, we, we make it simple. We, we try and really make it simple for the client. And I, I just say, that, you know, I like to end with uh, this quote here from Walt Disney, the way you get started is quit talking and begin doing. And the reason that quote stands out to me is because my agent, I have other agents who just always want to talk about getting going. And the one that I just told you about, who's at 230 in like a year and a half, he just went out and started talking. She put herself out there. Got She got, appointments got in the meetings and uh if she didn't know the answer she uh called <laughs> and you know it was she she's she's killing it now and she's she's loving it and she's made that same transition of seeing herself no longer as an agent but more as a resource one thing i'm curious larry like you mentioned six year for medicare supplement but yep. for Medicare Advantage also, is there any limit or you get it lifetime? That, it's uh, lifetime. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. the six-year uh, that I did was just a side-by-side -side comparison of in the first six years. Uh, okay. The commission is pretty close to the same. The advantage, you know, no my, the advantage doesn't have any underwriting. If, if they have a special election period, they can move to any advantage plan. Um, where the supplement supplement has no special election period, you can write that all year round, but they have to qualify. But that example was just showing the first six years. Um, okay. If you continue those numbers with the advantage, they are lifetime renewals. Great. No oh, thanks. And one thing I just want to point out, right? If you compare. Uh, like Medicare business with other line of businesses, right? So one uh, is like, you know, how getting started. So yes, there are trainings and all, uh, or sorry, the certifications which has to be done, but uh, getting appointments um, is in my mind, relatively easier in uh, Medicare compared to say something like, you know, property and casualty, where it's nowadays getting harder and harder to get appointment for maybe, you know, if you're new, especially for auto insurance, home insurance. Uh, life sure. insurance also is kind of relatively similar to Medicare, but that is one point where I see, you know, uh, if you are a new agent, especially, or if you're already existing agent, 
you can get started in, in Medicare relatively faster. Um, second thing is the recurring revenue part, which you touched upon. So Medicare, like it have a huge recurring revenue, as you mentioned, right? Like maybe 600 for the first year and 300. But if you look again in the property and casualty, right? If you write even a $2,000 policy or a $1,000 policy, you'll make maybe, you know, 100 to $200 commission, uh, which is comparatively, you know, um, not as good as Medicare. And secondly, you know, people shop around also a lot uh, in those areas. And, you know, that, that market is getting very hard. Um, yep. And in life, there is no recurring revenue. I mean, you get first year commission that might be comparatively higher to PNC. Or, and depending on the life insurance uh, policy, right, it might be a good amount. But then yep. there is no recurring, as you mentioned. Yep. So, Medicare, I think it provides a good stability if you want to have a long-term career uh, in insurance space. Uh, having a good, solid Medicare book of business can provide that. Uh, and on top of it, you can you know sell uh, other items as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Another thing, right, from growth perspective, just want to mention Medicare is a market which is growing. You know, last year, uh, there was an 8% growth in, in, you know, Medicare market from 2021 to 2022. And come, so that, this is a good opportunity where, you know, new agents or, or if you're changing or you want to grow, you know, there is, is a huge opportunity in, in Medicare space where, you you know, you can grow. Whereas like in a lot of other markets, as you say, they say they are a hard market, like, you know, already like you know all homes are insured like you know you may change them from one career to other career but the number of new homes being built is not as huge as you know number of new medicare folks getting uh, right in so this brings a huge opportunity um, and as larry mentioned right with with only um, certain number of folks if you can get to six figure then seven figure and beyond is also you know, um, not that far if you concentrate and, you know, do the right things. Right. I would say, and I, I've tried to break it down even simpler, like eight new clients per month is going to get you there in like a little bit over three and a half years. So even if someone's not going out writing 20, 25 a month, but they're writing eight, then they're, they're on, they're still on pace to get to that. 100k residual and beyond even in a little over three and a half years mm -hmm. no so, that's awesome uh, thanks. you know so keeping it like simple like that i like to keep things really simple like okay you could you, you know you may have a goal of 20 and you get eight you're like you know what keep just keep doing an eight just keep doing eight and you're gonna get to that you know, and, and, and there is a tipping point, you know, or it's, it is a struggle at first. You kind of like, man, I, I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. Um, but, but y you slowly are. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have this January where, where you get seven, eight grand and you're like, what's this from? And you're like, oh, that must be my residual. Um, I can't believe it. But, you know, so it it does. It it does it it is kind of in slow motion sometimes, but the people who stick it out, um, the people who stick it out, it's the best thing they ever did. Um, it certainly has been for me with all the different insurance. I mean, I always used to say I was a jack of all trades, master of none. And somebody told me in the, in the business just to just to be let the niche make you rich. And and quit trying to do everything. You know, I, I mean, if someone asks me about something else, I know I'll do it, but I'm not marketing anything else anymore. I just want to be known as, you know, the med the Medicare guy. That, and that, and that's, and another nice thing I, I didn't hit on a lot is that you can do Medicare without putting money up for leads. You can go like, you can go and and get your put a table up at a food bank. And, and people stop by and like, what? oh, I help people get additional benefits for their Medicare and Medicaid. You have Medicare and Medicaid? Great. You have Medicare only? Great. Why don't we set up a time and I'll see, we'll see if you, uh, 
and we see if you any and other benefits that you're missing that we can get for you. And carrying all the different companies, you know, they're they're always there's a little different niches. I mean, so I've had a client change plans because they wanted a first alert system that one plan had and the other plan didn't offer. You know, and she was about to pay thirty seven bucks a month for it. And I'm like, well, you know, your meds are going to be the same. Your doctor's costs will be the same. You're going to get this, this, and this, but you're also going to get this first alert system. And she's like, that's what I want. I'm just, I was about to pay 37 a month for life for that. You know, so, so there's a lot of, lot of nice things like that where you're helping people. Um, and it's just figuring out what's important to them. I mean, some of the plans for people with Medicare, Medicaid, they actually give them money to pay their utility bills or their rent or uh, cell phone bills or cable bills. So they may they may not be in a plan that offers that. And you come in and everything else is the same, but you add it, you know, 200, 200 bucks a month that they can buy food with or pay utilities or whatever. So that's what I love about it. I mean, especially coming back, coming from the ministry background, I, to me, it was like, this is great. I'm really, truly just helping people. Right. No, thanks, Larry. So uh, that's what, you know, we are trying to do with these set of, you know, webinar. I think today you got an introduction uh, about Medicare, like, you know, how big this opportunity is and um uh, how you like you know what the basics of it and uh, in coming uh, webinars we are going to discuss um, other items like you know how do you target and prospect clients what are different you know marketing strategies which you can use and work you know um, and I mean both kind right you know, paid and uh, free as Larry was kind of alluding to and um, how do you navigate this you know medical enrollment system um, how should you interact with a client? You know, when when you actually get a Medicare client, how should you present and sell the, to them? What kind of compliance and regulatory items you have to, you know, take care of? Uh, what are some of the technologies and tools, you know, which you should be using? And of, of course, some of the case studies um, um, and success stories uh, will be sharing. So, um, a few items like, you know, uh, feel free to join this Facebook group. I just posted this link. We'll try to have, you know, Medicare agents and um, I mean, folks, experts in joining that group. And if you have questions in the meantime, you can ask there. And um, I will also post this recording uh, in some time. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much for today. Uh, stay tuned. There will be a lot more sessions happening on a regular basis. Um, and if you are looking for any help uh, in terms of maybe getting appointment or how to get started, you know, feel free to reach out, um, send us an email and, you know, uh, we'll try to help you there. Um, and you can check out a lot of updates on our website, you know, friendly agent. So thanks a lot, everyone. And thanks, Larry, for all your time uh, and a lot of knowledge which you shared with us. I so hope you enjoyed today's session. Uh, in upcoming sessions, we are going to discuss uh, first, how do you identify, you know, um, which market to target? We are also going to discuss different lead generation strategies, uh, starting from organic, uh, you know, where you don't have to spend any money to, you know, paid marketing. What are the strategies you can use um, to scale up your insurance agency? So don't forget, uh, you know, to subscribe uh, and keep following this, you know, Medicare Bootcamp. Thank you.